Hey everybody and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the 25th anniversary Mulan limited edition doll from Shop Disney, so let's go! And before we start, I'm Chamie and I like to make toy videos here on my channel, so make sure you like, subscribe and ring the notification bell if you would like to stay tuned for more toy video content. Alright, here she is, so wow, she's beautiful. Her look is based on a variation of the matchmaker pink outfit, especially the scene where she and Fazu had a talk in the garden, so that is a very beautiful scene, so I'm glad they feature that. Her packaging is also quite beautiful with these shimmery gold foil imperial patterns on the front. The plastic window also features a new Mulan 25 years emblem, and she is a limited edition of 4,512. And on the back, the movie's logo in gold foil is just beautiful. And there's also a nice descriptive copy of the doll. The top window also features the logo again in gold foil. But however, the floral patterns on the plastic windows on the side are pixelated. And here is also both Mulans in their packaging for a little bit of a visual comparison. The right one came out in 2018 for her 20th anniversary. Now it's time to take her out. The anniversary emblem is actually not a sticker nor part of the cardboard box, but already printed on the plastic window itself. Here's one last look of her in her original box posing before we take her out. Which we should do soon because of how stretched her fabric is in the packaging, it's almost ripping it. And here is the look of the certificate of authenticity and mine is number 4360 out of 4512. And here is a quick 360 look of Mulan out of the box. And she's gorgeous! And I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but Disney have to find a better way to package the fabric in the boxes because her outfit has so many little holes poked through from all the little plastic tabs. And it just makes me sad because you got this beautiful doll, beautiful dress, beautiful fabric, and then you poke holes through them. Come on. On the bright side, the background art is beautiful. It's not pixelated, it's sharp, it's clear, it features a beautiful image of the altar for her ancestors, and I love the way the bottom part just blends into the pond. And I wanted to do this part on camera together with you guys to see how long her sleeves actually are, so let's cut them off. So beautiful. Now it's time to get into the details. So Mulan features a brand new face sculpt and paired with this kind of face paint, I, I'm just loving it. She, she's serious, she's fierce, she is ready to get down to business. I'm not sure if this sculpt is a sized up sculpt of the Ultimate Designer Princess doll, but it does share some similarities, especially the angry brow muscles sculpted into her forehead. I think it's the scowl is there in the sculpt itself, and I just love it so much. Imagine this sculpt as Soldier Mulan with that fierce look with her furrowed brows and the scowl. I think it's just gonna be so amazing if they did that one day. It's kind of hard to see on camera because I got all these lights on, but I'll try my best to show as much as I could, but it's there. And I think this is so cool because I think she might be the first Disney princess doll ever to have those sculpted into her face. It's, it's just it's amazing. If you look closely, even her lips are sculpted in a neutral position instead of an upward smile. So for the rest of her makeup, she got light blushing, an overall shimmery gold themed eye makeup, and dark pink lips. And I love that her irises are kind of painted upward so that when you pose her with her head tilted down, it almost looks like she's looking up. Which to me is like a very warrior-like pose, so I love that. 
She also got her rooted eyelashes. And one thing I noticed, which is the same from the 2018 doll, is that her iris highlights are painted with a shimmery gold. And that is super cool. It blew me away on the first doll and it still amazes me even now for this doll. And here is a quick comparison between their faces and I have to say I love both faces because they're kind of representing different emotions. I think uh, the 2018 one has a pleasant kind of regal face and then the newer one has a more determined kind of fierce warrior face so I love the representation of both. Although I have to say I think the newer one looks a little bit more like Mulan from the movie. Moving on to her hair, so she got waist length hair that is mostly straight and the waves are kind of from the packaging but I do kind of love the way it looks too. She also got her iconic little swirl which is gelled, but the rest of her hair is pretty much soft and free flowing. She also comes with her iconic emerald hair comb in her hair with a little flower and it's sculpted very accurately and faithful to the movie and it's a different sculpt from the one that they used on the designer doll too. On her left side, the way her hair is styled is that it's pulled back and it's just tied on the back underneath the rest of the hair so it hides the rubber band. It's also pinned in place with one of those plastic tabs. I also noticed that her eyes are not looking straight really and not glancing to the side either. It has like an angle. It's just like she's looking off into the distance somewhere, dazed kind of. Um, it's quite similar to what they did with the eyes on the Halle Ariel Limited Edition doll. So I'm not sure what I really feel about it, but it does kind of give off mysterious vibes. Moving on to her outfits, her dress is all one piece aside from the belt. So on her top, in the neck area, she got her teal ruffled little neck collar thingy. At the top of her hanfu is lined with this purple fabric adorned with gems and gold embroideries that is made to look like crisscrossed and overlapped. But unlike the 2018 doll, they're stitched together now. And for the overall part of the top, it has a textured pink fabric. Her bell sleeves feature embroideries and some gems sprinkled throughout, but most of the embroideries and gems are near the ends of the sleeves. It, it's a very beautiful embroidery. It's gold and it's pink and it has flowers and swirls and it does go all the way around. The patterns are symmetrical on both sleeves and they are lined with this dark blue fabric that matches the middle sash part. Just like the previous doll, a lot of additional embellishments and details come from this part. She has a teal rope belt in the middle that attaches to two more little sashes falling underneath. And in the middle, she got a blue beaded charm with a gold medallion in the middle adorned with a ruby. And at the end, she got tassels that is attached to this gold fastener kind of thingy. And both the medallion and the gold fastener are both metal. The tassels are a little bit frayed and messy, but that was the same for my first doll too. And under all of that, she got two longer and bigger sashes that are dark blue that matches the sash on top that are adorned with the same embroideries of gold and flowers, as well as gems. So while the whole dress is one piece, the entire sash, sash section in the middle is removable with Velcro on the back. And as you can see, the wrapping of her top is just an illusion that is stitched together now, whereas on the first doll, it was an actual thing. Like it wraps in the front and attaches with Velcro and the skirt was a separate piece. And I've said this in my initial reaction video of her, and I hope back then, but now I wish that they would have done an actual Hanfu style where it just wraps like an actual rope kind of thing, that they have done it in the past on some of the dolls, including this Playline doll that I will just show a quick clip. So I'll show you the way the Hanfu is executed here. Got this doll, you can see the slit here already, where the Hanfu meets. And you can undo this sash part, but look, it's almost like a bathrobe where opens because that's how you do it you wrap it here overlap each other and then you put all these things on and then so the slit is always in the middle even though if you hide the slit you know you, I hope you get the point that I'm trying to make here anyways here is a closer look at the middle sash section so the blue part and the red part are two separate fabrics that just stitched at the ends. it's really pretty I really do love this middle part 
Alright, now moving on to the main part of her skirt. So I noticed that it does have a lot of fabric, so that's good. So on top of it, she have this kind of asymmetrical red layer on top with these patterns. And they're not printed. I think they're kind of like brocade. I'm not really sure what it's called. But the patterns are kind of ingrained and stitched into the, the, the fabric. And both layers are stitched together on the back. In the movie, I think that red part is also part of the sash that they wrap her around in. So for her main part of her underskirt, the pale pink part, I will say it does have a lot of fabric. It's a very big poofy dress. So uh, once you take out the stuffing, it does not look like a westernized ball gown anymore. And it creates natural folds and natural little train going on. So I do love and appreciate that. But the fabric itself, it's... It's playline. It's exactly the fabric from a classic doll. It's not like a similar fabric. It's exactly that. It's very thin. It looks pretty. Um, so visually, it's pleasing because it's shimmery. It's pretty. But overall, it's very thin. It's very light. And I think it frays easily because it's already fraying from the plastic tabs being poked through it. And finally, we go to the sleeves, I think which is my favorite part of the doll, I don't know, I just love flowy long things, so I love the sleeves. Uh, they're made out of this sheer chiffon material, they're very soft, and it just looks graceful and beautiful on her. And if you want her hands to show, you can also easily just kind of fold them over on the top, and they stay there pretty nicely. Trying to see how far the sleeves go, I think they go all the way up to the shoulders because I lifted up her sleeve as much as I could and they're all the way there on her arms. And oh my god, I was so pleasantly surprised by this, but she got brand new shoes, y'all. It's a new sculpt, it's a new shoe entirely overall, because I was sure she was gonna just come with black flats, the usual ones, but these shoes are pretty nice. Uh, they're sculpted with a little curved tip, and she has like a little red line going across in the middle and also around the feet hole, and the overall part of the shoe is also like this kind of textured little thingy it almost looks like a sports shoe but i think it's made to look like it's woven out of fabric i think for her feet articulation she comes with the old articulated flat angled feet for the rest of her articulation she comes with the hinged knees the swivel waist shoulders elbows wrists and neck And finally, here is also a look at her sword, or Fazu's sword to be more accurate. Overall, it's sculpted very faithfully and accurately to the movie. Um, although I do think the hilt dragon part is supposed to be gold in the movie, but we can easily paint that. The handle is also nicely sculpted and painted in blue. And the overall part of the blade also features some ornate patterns in there to kind of zhuzh it up, which I actually love. The only thing I wish for the sword is to be like a chrome kind of sh reflecty material because the sword reflection plays a lot into her story visually so if they have done like a chrome cast kind of sword with reflections on it I think it would have been really cool. But overall I love the inclusion of this sword because now we got Fazu's sword because the first soul came with Shan Yu's sword so now we got both swords. For those interested in the stand she comes with the usual new updated saddle stand with an oval base. So overall, for my final thoughts, I think this is a very good doll to celebrate Mulan's 25th anniversary. Um, she's not perfect by any means, but there's also a lot of good things on her. I love the moment that they picked. I love the hair comb. I love the sword. I pretty much love the execution of her dress. I just wish that it would have been an actual Hanfu and that the fabric would have been, wouldn't have been so playline. And of course, I love the updated face sculpt. It's so beautiful. It suits her so much. And they should definitely do a soldier doll eventually one day with the sculpt because it would slay. And of course, I do appreciate the addition of the new sculpted shoes as well. So overall, she is a doll worth getting for. So what are your thoughts on this doll? Like, would you have preferred if they have fully committed and go all the way for the matchmaker look with all the glam setup? Or are you happy with the moment that they picked for the pink look? Also, now that we've seen both dolls, which one do you prefer more? The pink one or the blue one? 
For me, I think because of the two different moments they depict, I, I love both dolls. But if I have to choose one in terms of execution of quality, I think I would still choose the blue one. I think um, it was executed better in terms of details and quality, so that one still wins in that regard. But overall, I think both dolls bring honor in their own different ways. Alright, so that is it for my review on the 25th Anniversary Limited Edition Mulan doll from the shop Disney. So what are your thoughts on this doll? Comment down below. Um, you can also check me out on Instagram at Chamie Creates for my toy photography featuring this Mulan doll and so many more. If you enjoyed this video, you can thumbs up, like, subscribe and share. It'll really help out my channel. Once again, thank you so much for watching until the very end and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!